Welcome back to the TED Talks YouTube channel and podcast. Now today I'm gonna to talk to you about how I started in property with just 30,000 pounds. You heard that right? Listen, don't, don't lose your hair, don't, just stay tuned. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I did and how you can potentially do the same. So how did I start with 30,000 pounds? So I had a recruitment business you know, prior to this where I saved up cash and I used that as a company loan from the recruitment business to the property business, simple as that. Now, of course it took me three, four years to get to the point where I had enough savings in, in that business that I could transfer it across. And it could be the same for you. You know, people don't like to talk about, they like to say, oh yeah, I spent 50 grand and started in property, but hold on, how long did it take to actually get that money? That is important. Now, this is something that, you know, we don't need to go into today, but just understand, forget what people are talking about online. It may take you some time to get to the kind of cash pot you need to start. Now look, you don't necessarily need a cash pot to start. You can use investor funds, you can do JVs, but it always helps when you have your own funds available and it just makes it easier to get an investor. You also have skin in the game and also the risk is reduced, especially for your first property that you might be doing without any prior experience or education. That's what my e-learning's for. So how did I sort of go about this? The first thing I did before spending my money, before, you know, kind of really delving into anything is I did as much education and networking as possible. I listened to every podcast. I started my own. You know, I went to every single networking event that I could find all over the country. I was on Facebook messaging people whilst also building my brand, by the way, giving people a reason to talk to me. All through this networking, I met so many people and learned so much. You don't have to have your own podcast, but it helps when you have a brand and people want to talk to you and they want to spend time with you. And you're kind of giving and taking. You know, I had recruitment experience. I had business experience. I had social media experience that I could offer to people in return to learn. You know, so I set aside a budget. Books, podcasts, you know, Amazon, property books, buy everything, obviously, buy mine. And by speaking to people, I learned so much, not just about property, but also about the kind of person it takes to be successful in property. You know, I learned the kind of person that's needed to make this into something worth doing. You know, I, I kind of learned the skills I'll need and the elements of property that I have to be in charge of, you know, to, to understand and to actually progress in property. I only had 30 grand. Now, quick maths here. Most places in the UK, that's kind of your whole deposit gone. And most places you can't even afford. But I was like, okay, well, that's my money gone. I need the rest of it. What did I do? I used bridging finance. Click the card above and it'll take you to a video on bridging finance. Super powerful, obviously has its risks, obviously has pros and has cons. But, you know, it's a very, very powerful tool for buying properties. And when you're doing BRR, B is buy. It might as well stand for bridge because you need to use some cash to purchase these properties because they're usually not gonna be in the best condition, which means they're unmortgageable. So I went to a broker, they messed that up. So I then went to a family member who was just about to put this money into her ISA and I said, oh, come on, if you see my other video on investing, then you know, you know, it ain't gonna go very far. I said, look, this has dropped out. Ideally, we need to complete soon. I was so impatient. You know, can you loan me the money here? I'll pay an interest rate, here's the terms, you know, blah, 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 all this stuff. And they said, yeah. This is why family members are great to work with as investors. I then took that and I purchased the property and I purchased it for about 50,000 pounds. And we spent, you know, stamp duty, refurb, everything in was about 12 and a half grand. So we're in for 62 and a half. This house, by the way, at 50 grand was an absolute steal. There really wasn't that much wrong with it. The refurb was like six and a half grand. It was, and again, if I did it now, the refurb would be so much less. So we spent this money on it. You know, it took a bit of time, the saucer, you know, messed around a lot, like most of you do, and it got revalued. Here's the magical part. It got revalued at 80,000 pounds. Quick math, 75% of that, which is what you get paid out on a buy to let mortgage usually, you can go higher, go lower, is 60,000 pounds. And you know how much I've spent, 62 and a half. So basically this deal pulled out all of the money, gave it back to me, back to the investor, back to reinvest and left in two and a half grand. And it cash flows about 300 pounds a month. Quick maths again, I know you love it. At the end of this year or any year when I bought it two, three years ago, it's a free house. It's basically paid off all the money left in and then it's making some profit. And now three years later, same tenant, it's just making profit every month. That's the beauty of BRR. But you know, it's only because of the people I met, the places I went, the things I read, you know, the people I met through my own podcast, other people's social media that I consumed, 
conversations I listened in on through a podcast, not through just creeping after people at a networking event, I learned how to do this. I learned how to find a good solicitor, how to find it. And this is where, you know, you can do it the long and hard way, which I did, which cost money, which lost me money, because inevitably there were lots of things I didn't know. And there was lots of glue with all the knowledge that I just didn't have. And what that meant was, well, things didn't go to plan. Things didn't go as well as they should have as I grew the portfolio. If I'd had something or a mentor or something like that, I know my life could have been a lot easier. You know, this is where my e-learning comes in. You know, I'll put a link below, go check it out. It has everything you need to do BRR, to do flips. You know, you pay a grand now, I guarantee I'll save you 10 grand and make you 10 grand later down the line. And that's something I think I should have done. I would have saved those six months. You know, in getting your time back, I can get the money back I would have spent. You know, I can get, you know, the annoyance back, some deals that went wrong, but I cannot get that time back I spent learning, which even then after spending that long, didn't really get me the requisite knowledge I needed and didn't give me enough or in enough detail. So, you know, I ask you to really consider where you're at, how much time you have, how much time you have to commit to this. And if it's better to just take I don't want to say a shortcut, but you know, to do something that will elevate you to get you forward, you know? So me, I had the right network, I had the right people around me, I had a family member who loaned me the money. Yours might not be a family member, could be anyone, could be a friend, could be your boss at work. Anyone can loan you this money, anyone can JV with you, right? Obviously within money laundering regulations, don't go JVing with a, you know, a narco trafficker. This is how, you know, I got to where I got to. It's a combination of all these things, and I suppose what underlines it is hard work, persistency and consistency. Going to networking events every single week, traveling the country every single month. Why? To learn. Simply to learn so I could then apply it. Now, like I said, there are shortcuts. You've got my e-learning. I do mentor people, select few people, five this year only. But you need to make sure, one, you're doing the right strategy that suits you. You've got the right funds. And if you don't, you know how to go and get them. And also the fact that you're comfortable and happy with the process and how it works from A to Z, from, you know, from A to B to C to D. You need to know that whole process. In my opinion, you have to understand it well. And this only comes from doing all of the things I've said or taking you know, a, a shortcut or, or not, or doing it the longer way. Or So you need to get out there and do these things to secure your first deal. If I had zero, would I have done the same? I don't know, I can't answer that, it would have been different. But I do know that if you don't have 30 grand, you have less, you have more, there is always a way around it. And there is always a way of working with someone. There's always a how, there's always a who. And it's your job to find that and to work that out. And that comes with having the right knowledge. So don't just jump in. You know, someone said to me, oh, Ted, I've um, never done a refurb before, thinking like an eight bed HMO, offers accepted. And but you don't even know if it's a deal, FYI. What if I just do it blindly? What if I just jump into the deal, do it blindly? And I was like, well, would you do heart surgery blind? But well, I don't think so. Would you drive a car blind? Don't. Would you walk down the street blindfolded? You wouldn't. You wouldn't choose to do that. Would you walk off a plank on a pirate ship blind? No, you wouldn't. So why the hell are you going to risk a hundred thousand pounds refurb blind? One of the stupidest things I've heard. One of the, there's no such thing as a stupid question, but should I do a refurb blind with no knowledge or experience or anything and no help and not even reading online, like nothing? Don't do that. Don't do that. So make sure you get educated. Make sure you do what you need to do before you're comfortable, before you start getting your first deal. This is how I did it. And you know, I'm blessed that I had a great team around me, you know, apart from one of them, that now are the same team I work with three years later and X tens many deals later. Um, your team is super important as well. Go to the property event slash sponsors. And that is basically all of my team there. Go contact them. I've got accountants, got solicitors, got brokers. Go and speak to them. You know, no obligation, have a chat with them. And before you leave this video, you know what you gotta do. Hit subscribe, hit like, hit share and uh, leave a review if this is on the podcast.